Hello, good evening to my fellow friends, clients, viewers, fans, and the like. I'm Jonathan Bengal here, host of Naked Tax Talk Babies, where we bear down to the naked truth about our personal lives, our business lives, and of course, our monetary lives. And you know, babies, just like what RuPaul says, we're all born naked, but we all wear drag. So I'm actually joined today with an amazing guest named Julia, and her and I met at this amazing networking opportunity that her and I were part of. And I just loved everything that she's about. She's going to bring on some amazing energy, and we're going to have a good open conversation about it all. And maybe some tax tips and just the tip, I'm just saying. So I cannot wait anymore, but I'm going to go ahead and welcome Julia to our show here. So Julia, please introduce yourself. Who in the world are you? Who is the magic sauce that's come to my show? Ah, hello, everybody. Um, and first of all, before I say anything at all, happy birthday to Jonathan. Can you believe it? It's his birthday and we are here together. Yes, I'm we are. Really excited. I was like, yes, I get to say happy birthday to Jonathan on the air. Happy yes. birthday. Um, yes, my name is, yes, my name is Julia Bernatsky. I am the founder of Untamed Hearts. And I'm also co-founder of Conscious Life Collective Community and Messages from the Universe Project. So all of those things are actually the same thing my work is all about shifting consciousness and elevating energy to a higher frequency calling forth what we need to create our visions dreams projects and having it as if it's happening right now at untamed hearts we create jewelry infused with energy and then we work with communities and we work with people does that make sense oh. It does. I mean, I, I mean, I get it. Cause I'm kind of like, you know, I do believe in a lot of spirit and energy and the reality of our lives is all conducted through this thing called energy, or if I may, current C. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I see that. Julia, how long you've been, how long you've been doing this? Is this something you've always been involved in? I've been wired that way. I was born this way, right? So even without having consciousness about it, I've been living it. And then as I've been like on my path of like spiritual development, personal development, my intu connecting to my intuition and um, it, it started to be much more conscious and aware and it, 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 it's, it's intentional. So at Untamed Hearts, for example, we create objects that carry energy. We create it intentionally. I right? see. So we work with it intentionally, but I've been wired that way. I mean, oh I was that's, when was like the earliest moment that you remember like just something was special about you? Yeah, I was always, as I was growing up, I was always able to feel pain of animals. Oh. So it, it was literally coming through my body. So I'm, I was experiencing world through energies. So not through logic. I'm a very logical person if I need to be. But my right. first thing is intuition and energy. I feel it in my body. And then, and then like, I always was, I had information. I just couldn't, I didn't know that it was a real thing and, and unless I, and, until I realized it was a real thing. And like later on, I would... She lives in New York, by the way. So, <laughs> so, so we're getting a little bit of some New York traffic oh. in the background. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, it's always having an intuition, always having it in, um, in information, and you realize that you have that information after the facts are confirmed. You know, like somebody would say like you you would see this come alive certain way and i would be looking back saying i had this information it's a matter of knowing it trusting it and being aligned with your truth and do you do you help people to find that tuneness so to speak to tune into yeah. that if they have some of that ability already yes i uh, often um make this example when I explain people about untamed hearts. We all subconsciously know how to use energy. Now, 
when, think about it. When you go for an interview, what do you think about when, as one of the first things or important meeting? Uh, are am I going to nail it? Like, am I going to make sure that I am on? I'm on par. How do you like? Do you, what else? Like, what what else do you think? What what am I going to? I think. Okay, well, I'll I'll pretend like okay, okay. So I'll make it me. So uh, if I am getting ready for anything, I mean anything, yes. Um, then I basically kind of already envision what it is that I'd like to have as the outcome before I have the meeting, That's and great. I and I I ask this question because I know for me personally, I have. I know that there's energy that works with me and I know I have a lot of this ability, right? But I'm not a master, I'm not a master yet. But the point is, is that like, it's, I do, so I do prep for a meeting in advance, kind of like, this is what I want the outcome to be or this is how I believe it's gonna be. And then of course, when it happens, I'll give you an idea, all right? So we're about to get real personal. Okay. So um, I, I'm gonna be very careful how I word and phrase when I'm about to phrase, but this is pertinent, okay? okay. So. I um, was supposed to uh, get something for being badass that I that I am, right? Uh -huh. And I sent an email to this inf to this organization, and I apologize for speaking vaguely. It's just because you know hot water. Yeah. And yeah. I uh, said something to the effect of, "Hey, listen, I'm planning on helping out my fellow accountants out there, so you know who you are, and I want to help." them and bring them into my world and teach them how amazing and fabulous they can all be instead of just preparing tax returns. And so I reached out to this organization, told them that I wanted to partner up with them and bring to all and bring us together and work together. About 20 minutes later, I got pinged uh, from one other person that's part of the organization. And the moment they pinged me, I already knew I was not going to get what they said I was going to get a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. that sense? Yeah. So I already knew that like, they didn't have to call me up and say, you're not getting it. They didn't have to present it that I wasn't getting it. I already knew. You knew. And sure enough, a week or so later goes by and I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that from them just sending a ping out to me. Yep. Yeah, is that kind it. of like what you're talking about like that? I love what you said because one of the things that you you do subconsciously, you are visualizing the outcome and you are putting yourself in the place as if you're receiving this outcome. You're walking into the space as if this outcome is happening already. But then you keeping yourself open to... Um, different possibilities, right? What's yes. going to be, you are walking in there doing everything you can possibly do for that outcome to become reality. So you're calling forth, you're bringing future into now. Mm -hmm. You're the future, right? So that's one. Another thing I wanted to um, bring to our attention and share it with you guys, one of the first things that very often we think about without realizing it that it's so important is what are we going to wear? Why? Like at your show, you needed to change your clothing. I did, yes. Or get that, out of them, I should say. <laughs> because that's what we do. So why? Because we want the world to receive a certain way. And yeah. very often when we go for something that is very important to us, we would take an object that is meaningful. It might be a watch. It might be a lucky ring. It might be a necklace that my mom gave me. It might be an old jacket that is that lucky jacket. It doesn't matter. It's out of style and too small on me right now. But yes. that is the piece that allows me to stand strong yes. and to show up in the world energetically in the way I want the world to see me. So yes. it gives me courage. It gives me energy, certain yes. energy. So it allows me to connect to certain energy. So subconsciously, we're doing it all the time. We have these little things in our lives that bring us back or forth, bring us forth and allow us to connect to the energy that we want to be, to like show up in that way in the world, right? It strengthens us. It yes. allows us. It, it's as if somebody's holding our hand. When I have yes. that, I'm okay. Yes. So yes. 
subconsciously know how to do it. At Untamed Hearts, we do it consciously. So objects that we create, not only beautiful that you can wear, but they're meaningful and they have intention. And they have energy that we physically infuse energy into objects. So when you wear it, it becomes that peace that calls forth, brings to the to the present, that future, that intent. Yes. Right? I so in, yeah. Yeah. I believe you because I got to tell you, so people have seen me, if they've seen me speaking from stages other ways, um, I wear this fabulous jacket, fabulous jacket. Yeah. And um, I got my, I got a lot of jackets now, but my very first jacket, I got it in Vancouver in July, September of 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, it's this gorgeous, gorgeous jacket. It's just freaking gorgeous. Maybe I'll put it on for you. And yeah. uh, so what happened was I walk into a jacket store in Vancouver in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for a bathrobe because my show originally started with me wearing a bathrobe at a mm. tax conference. Mm. So I'm trying to find something to symbolize that, right? In a more like fashionable way. Yeah. So I wear this jacket, it's gorgeous. And I felt uncomfortable wearing it, but yet I wanted to wear it to kind of mm. like emulate, like this is what I'm about, right? The nakedness, yeah. but through a jacket. Yeah. And my girlfriend, um, Lise, so Lise, I know you like to watch my show. So when I brought the jacket to her apartment, to, I mean, not her apartment, her condo, she said to me, uh, you know, Jonathan, I pray, when I pray over people's things, like it always protects them. It always, it shields them. There and so we, did. so we got in a circle with me and my other girlfriends. We all got in this big circle and I was wearing the jacket and we did like this circular prayer that the jacket would carry with it confidence and it would keep me protected. No one would say bad things to me. And sure as, sure as shit, I wear this jacket wherever I go and all I get are compliments all day long. There and I go. think this is what you're talking about, right? That is exactly what I'm talking about. I love that story. That's exactly what we do and we do it intentionally and we do it consciously and we are able to be aligned with that energy, with that intention. And so everything we do is about inspiring people to live the life with intent. I love that. Because you know why that's important? Because I always say this all the time, right? That we were all, every living being in this world, and it's not me who came up with this, by the way, it's the good Buddha who said this, right? That all living beings, including the cockroaches, check out my episode on how cockroach got me wisdom. And uh, you'll learn about the story of Oscar and how he moved into my bathroom. So what I'm saying is that Buddha says that, you know, all living beings have one singular wish. And that's the wish to be happy, plain and mm -hmm. simple, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because when we make a wish, Here's what, here's what we need behind the wish. Are you ready? Intention. There you the go. intention sets the wish, right? It's the intention. Yeah. And then the mouth and the body take all the energy and the, 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 the action to fulfill that intention, which is the wish. Yeah. And what I love about what you're saying is, is that, which is true, we have two options, right? We can go into it uh, unconsciously or through the fog of ignorance, right? Or we can become aware, which removes the ignorance, and then we can apply mindfulness to it. And now that's bringing it to the consciousness, isn't it? To the conscious level. I and love now that. we can live in that moment. Is that what you're saying too? Yes. And also it becomes, it's not random. It's, we are the creators. We are taking responsibility for every single thing that is happening to us, every moment, yes. we are the creators and we are the creators. And that's what, 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 what I want to inspire people with everything that I do today, that you are the creator of your life. You have absolute control. You have, abs even though, even in the moments when you feel you don't, you always have a choice. You always have can choose how you react to things that are out of our control. We can always go back inside and call forth the energy that we want our reality to be. Our reality is here for us. It's not happening to us. It's happening for us. So it is a lesson that needs to be learned.
And so this, it's a very different relationships with with being alive. Like I actually have problems saying it because we are life. I am life. I'm not having life. I am life. Yes. So yes. this journey, the, like my my life, not my life. This life is my responsibility. This yes. journey is totally mine. Yes. This thing that is yes. in front of me is totally mine. And yes. it, it's giving you so much strength. It's giving you so much, like, I am the creator of my own life fully. It's a good news. Yes, yes. I believe that. I mean, I, I've known this for a long time. And and in fact, I say too, right? You're absolutely, you nailed it too. I, I'm in total alignment with you, by the way. You know, which is the reality is, is that we are the creators of our existence. We really are. We truly are. Because here's the thing, right? Like, I know this to be true. That universe only knows the answer yes. And it has brought forth so many of my wishes. It's redonkulous. In fact, so much so that I've just got a message from Universe about about a month ago, and I was journaling. So I do journal. I'm a journalizer, and I, I journal, journal, journal. And usually it's because I'm channeling energy and allowing it to transform into letters. And the message that I received, are you ready for this, Julia? Are you ready for this? This is cray cray. So this is what Universe, this is what I wrote down in my journal. When we make a wish, right? Because we're making wishes every single day, right? I wish I had more money. I wish I had a better job. I wish I had a better wife. I had a wish I had a better husband. I wish I had a wish. I wish I wish. I <gasps> a lot of wishes. Okay. So, so many genies to go around, but I'm just saying. So, we have all these wishes, and the universe is saying yes, 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 all the time, right? All the time, good and bad. And here's what I discovered when we write down the wish, there's two outcomes that come with it, is what I discovered. And through universe, I have also figured this out, which is this. When we make a wish, universe says, do you fulfill your end of the wish? Mm. So if you place a condition on the wish, universe expects the condition to be met. Otherwise, universe goes, mm, I ain't doing that deal with you one more time, right? And so let me tell you a story. Can I share a story with you? Oh, my God, please. Okay, check this one out. You're gonna love, 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 love this. All right, so check it out. Ready? Yeah. So it was a few years. Uh, no, it wasn't a few years ago. Was it a few years ago? When did Coco? So we had a we had a we had a uh, standard poodle, uh, Coco Chanel. May she rest in peace. Mm. And she passed away in March. Uh, five years old. She had, was born with Addison's disease, and the list goes on. A poor thing. But we gave her the best life one can give, right? And I mm. even did like a poa prayer for her, which is important when you're transitioning from this life to the next. So needless to say, I think it was in like, it was in like October, November of 2019. I remember the exact dates. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was growing lumps on her legs, these big lumps. And they were hard. So of course it felt cancerous to me. And we took her to the vet. And the vet said, um, it's $2,500 to take the, take the things off of her body and mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Now at that time, I didn't have $2,500. And so I was like, you know what, that's okay. Like when I get the money, I'll bring her in, you know, da, da, da. Meanwhile, make her life as comfortable as we can. And so we went home and I made a wish in the shower where all good thinking happens. And I said, I want $2,500 and I'm going to use this money and take my dog and get her fixed. That was the wish. Mm. So about, I don't know, four days later, give or take, I had a new client come in and they paid me $2,500 for a service I had provided. I mean, we're talking an even $2,500. But my ass goes, I'm going to save it because I don't want to spend it right now, right? Because let's be real, back then I was still working through my mindset of scarcity. So mm -hmm. I was like, I may never make $2,500 again, so I'm going to save it. So mm -hmm. I put it away. Well, all of a sudden, no more deals were being closed. So one week goes by, couldn't close a deal. Two weeks goes by, couldn't close a deal. Three weeks goes by, couldn't close a deal. And now I'm getting frustrated because it's like, daddy's got to make some mama, right? So I remembered the wish. It came to me. And I went, oh, my God. I made a wish to take my dog in if I got 2,500 bucks for the vet bill. Mm. So guess what my ass did? I picked up the phone, bring, bring, bring. And I'm like, I'm bringing in Coco to get her surgery done. Can we, can we get it scheduled? And they were like, bring her in tomorrow, 7 a.m. 
I will be there. Girlfriend, Julia, let me tell you. Mm. I took my dog. I paid the $2,500, got her fixed, and I closed five deals right after that. That's what I learned is that when you have a wish out there to my listeners and my viewers, when you have a wish, write down the wish. Because if you put a condition on that wish, universe expects you to fulfill that wish with the conditions. So that got me thinking, right, Julia? Can you imagine if you learned how to make wishes without conditions? Oh, girlfriend, talk about that for a moment. I'll let you share talk about that for a moment. What happens if we can make wishes with no conditions? I know. I, I love that story because, yes, universe is listening. And, yes, universe is with us. And, yes, when we say something that we are going to do, it is very important to actually hold your end of the deal. Totally, because when the moment you said something, energy is created so that that wish could be fulfilled. So when we don't fulfill it, it's kind of like we're stealing. Yes. We think it's something that doesn't belong to us. Yes. So I, yes. Uh, it's a great example. And it, it's just an example how things are connected and how things actually work. And just having the certainty that yes. we are all one and that we are all supported and just having relationships with the creator universe uh, guardian angels whoever you connect with your higher self it's such a gift to be able to have that um intimate relationships with because we are never alone no. that's another thing and that's another part of um, my work is for people to know that you don't do things on your own you are never alone never alone never alone including the smoker in my house <laughs> so you know let me tell you so we're talking about energy right and it, it some energy gets stuck behind so uh, I'll you would like to hear a story about the ghost that lives in my house yes please <laughs> And, it's total total energy. So um, I I don't know its gender yet. Um, it has not revealed that part. I haven't felt it yet. So let me tell you about it. So uh, and this and and whoever it is, it's actually a kind ghost. And I say that in the sense that I've met malicious ones. Oops, I don't know what happened. Um, so I've met I've met malicious ones, but this one is not. And so for the longest time, it does two things actually. It mimics our voices. So uh, sometimes I'm home alone and I hear my husband saying things to me and it sounds like he's shouting from across the room. So I think he's home. So I'll get up go looking for him, but he's nowhere to be found. And then when he's home alone, he'll hear my voice speaking to him, right? Thinking I'm home as well. So for a long time, we would always smell like an older, like heavy smoker, uh, sensation in the house. Like somebody was smoking, like, you know, how like someone in the yard is smoking like that kind of smet sensation. And so for the longest time, we thought that this was our, um, Oh, okay. Wait, what? Sorry. So I just saw what you said. Take me off for a second. And I will close the window. Do you mean like this? <laughs> um, okay. So I was going to tell you, yeah. So let me tell you, so this ghost, right? The spirit. So it kind of like produces like a, like a smoke. So it smells like a smoker is smoking in the house. So for the longest time, I thought it was the neighbors that were the ones that were smoking and the air conditioner was pulling the smoke into the house. And so I was getting really annoyed with the neighbors. I was like, like, can't they like, can't they like smoke further from my house? Like goodness gracious. Right. Then one day, we were sitting in the living room, my husband and I, just recently, like a few months ago. No air conditioner was on, no fans are on, but we could smell the heavy smell of the cigarettes and we could feel a funnel, like a really, like a, like a funnel of cold air, like landing on us. Like we could actually feel it. And it was just like over us. Right. And I realized in that moment that it was a spirit. Like I caught on that it was a spirit. And so I said to the spirit, do you mind if you don't smoke because we're not smokers and we find the smoke to be offensive? And would you believe it? It put out its cigarette and we couldn't smell the smoke anymore, but we could still sense it still sitting on top of us on the couch. And so it, st it stayed there. 
And then one day I was doing an episode. I can't remember which episode I was on. And this was when I was in my house. I'd moved to the house during because of COVID, right? So I so be seek before COVID, right? So COVID happened. And sure enough, this entity makes its known itself present. And so it sat down right next to me and it was smoking, was smoking a cigarette. And I looked over to the empty space and I said, hello, how are you? It's good to see you're here sitting with me, enjoying my show. And, you know, now you're a guest and you know, no one can see you, you know, blah, 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 but welcome anyways. And, and that was it, right? And that was it. And then I said, can you please turn out your cigarette? Cause we don't, we're not smokers. And so sure enough, it turned out a cigarette and I could still feel that cold essence. So one day a friend of ours came over and I was telling him how we've got the ghost living with us. And he must have had like a sense of doubt, like on his face or something. And the spirit knew that. So it went over to the wine glasses and it and it it like tickled the wine glasses. So they chimed. They went like like this, like and he looks over to the wine glasses and I go, That's the ghost I'm telling you about. They're just letting you know that they are real. And he was like, okay, like, you know, he was like totally bugged out, like, okay, <laughs> which is fine. So just recently, uh, that we have not, we have not felt the, the spirit for a while. It's been a few months. It's not been around. And I have to tell you, I kind of was missing it because I was like, it became like a friend because it's like, it's not an evil ghost. And um, it must have sensed that I was missing its presence. So last week it came back. And it was a smoke again, right? We're like, oh, the smoke, the, the, the ghost is here. And so I got really happy. And I was like, it's so happy to have you around. Like I was missing you. Like you can have a seat next to us. <laughs> and, and so now I think it knows, and I hope it does, that it's in a welcome space, right? Which is so strange to say this, um, but I understand it. So here's something really magical. I turned around. And in Buddhism, we say that uh, spirits are trapped. They're stuck here because of their of their attachment to these worldly possessions, so much so that it traps them here and they have to let their karma extinguish so they can move on to the next realms. So because of that, the poor things, they suffer from the lack of water and lack of food. And that's what they're chasing the most. So it's good when you have spirits to actually take your food. So if you have food, this is why we have shrines in our homes for Buddhas. Uh, if you ever go into someone who's Asian and they have Buddha statues or they have something, they've got their, their food and drinks there. It's not because it's weird. It's because they're making an offering to something they cannot see, but they believe is there. And this is true of spirit. So what I know is this, here's what I do. I took a little bit of water. So I have a little bit, like, like a little glass of water. And yesterday I said to the spirit, May you drink this water and may you fulfill your thirst. I know you're thirsty and may you be happy. And I put the water down on the little table so it could have it to drink. And then we were eating dinner and I took some of my plate food and I put it like on a little plate and I went to the same place and I said, this food is for you so that you may enjoy it and it may nourish you in your ghostly spirit. And uh, it's for you. So please be happy. May you be free of this. And so I put it down so they could enjoy it. Now, the dogs probably ate it and the dogs probably drank the water, but at least the offering was made because in their world, in their reality, they're thankful for it. And now instead of making enemies, even in the ghostly realms, we make friends. Isn't that just a beautiful story or what? I think it's a beautiful story for in different ways. Like there's different folds <laughs> to this story. And one of them is that one of the things that I want for myself and I wish to every person who I come across with is to go with the life, go with the flow of life. So instead of trying to fix it the way we think it's supposed to be, if we work with it, we get much further and we get support and we get um, this momentum like to go with the flow to see what the life is bringing to us and see how we can work with what is brought to us and to see in every single instance of what is happening in our life to see a lesson that we need to learn and maybe it's a lesson of opening your heart yes. maybe it's a lesson of being kind compassionate yes, yes. understand that Everything around us, energy, every single thing, the chair you sit on, 
maybe we can talk to that. Like I'm going uh, for some people, it's a crazy talk, but for me, it's the, <laughs> the, it's, it's, it's the reality. Every single thing is is energy. The crystals around us could could help us tremendously. The pieces that we wear on our body, this is as intimate as you get on your skin, can bring us, can elevate vibration of energy, or it can train us, or people around us, or when we have clutter around us, it's draining us. When we unclutter, we create openings. So having objects in our life that creating openings that empower us, that remind us of things that we are have in, like we intentionally creating in our lives. But sometimes we need reminders. We need that support. We need that inception. Yeah. And yeah. so I love that story because it you you totally going with life. You yes. totally embracing the environment, and instead of making it hostile, you welcoming what's coming or who is around you or what is um, for some reason there. It could be someone, it, it could be a spirit that has responsibility of protecting the space. You know, because there are different, there's different levels and different like energies that, and again, it's not like, like in a horror movie spirits. It's not like that. It's an energy. All it is, it's an energy that might be here to protect. Or might be here to like has different purposes. Yes. And at some point might go back to the creator's life. Life. Yes. Yes. No, it's I mean it's it is the truth, right? And it's funny because you know, when you talk about like the purpose and you know why we're here, because this is really got from what you're saying too. And it's interesting because when you talked about like, you know, it's the lessons we're supposed to learn. I did an episode on this too, that there's a lesson in everything. And okay. You know, what's interesting about this is you're right, you know, is it about love and compassion and and not being afraid and so forth and so on. And and more importantly, I thought to myself, you know, maybe perhaps a lot of us, I think I think this is true of my own case, um, was brought here into this world, into this current space, so that I could fall in love again with my soul. So I can fall in love with who I was born to be mm. in all of its glory and all of its essence and to mm. let go of all of the judgment and the shame that society brings with it from the moment that we're born and to own the essence of who we are and to not yeah. be afraid to say that, right? Yeah. No, I love that because um, you're talking about acceptance yes. and this is a huge conversation, especially for women. The yes. self-love, acceptance yes. of who you really are. Yes. You know, like not who we want the world to think we are. And uh, suspending the judgment. And just like you said from the beginning, like RuPaul said, unless you love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? That's that's exactly it. And that's, you know, and that's a very powerful statement because I think a lot of people struggle with what does that actually mean, you know, to love myself, right? Like, what does that actually mean? And I think for me, part of the building blocks, part of the process is, and I discovered this, and I didn't even know there's a whole thing around this, but apparently I think it's called like mirror talk or something. But I just happened to one day sit down in front of myself in front of a mirror and started allowing myself to just speak to myself. And what I was noticing and the observation I was noticing was that I was picking first on the negative shit that I was looking back in the mirror. So, right, like I would notice like, oh, my balding pattern and my little love handles and this and that, and you know, the whole list goes on. And all of a sudden I realized something mm -hmm. that because I'm looking at myself and I'm picking on myself, the self, which is looking back at me, right, is in theory picking on my own goddamn self. So it's like a double whammy. It's like first pick on it, then it picks it right back. So it did two things for me. One is it helped me realize that if this is true, then what I'm emitting, what I'm putting out there is a reflection of self, which means that if I'm nasty to other people, they're mm. going to be nasty right back. If I'm kind and loving and I'm when I work with people, that will also come back. And then the second thing it taught me, the person in the mirror looking back at you 
has never been told shit at all. It's in a whole other realm on, on not here in the physical presence with you. It is a reflection of your soul. It's a reflection of who you are. And that has never been told what it should be. You know, like right now, when we look at the reflection of my video, I see myself, you see yourself. And truly the reflection in this box is really the soul looking back at me. And so what I discovered is, it's if I could train myself to speak positively to myself out loud and eventually train the subconscious mind, which is a little voice, I say it's a little voice that talks and shit to you, and train that voice to start speaking positively to you as well. So I have a rule. When I see myself in any of my reflections, because my soul is with me everywhere I go. If I look out the mirror right now, I would see my reflection because of the lighting. I look right here in the video playback, I see my soul looking back at me. And so because of that, I make it my mission to only speak positively, not only to myself, but to others. And then what I discovered is that I finally believed it, Julia. One day, I finally believed it, that yes, baby, I am powerful. I am a genius. I am amazing. I'm a badass business owner. I'm a badass tax strategist. Like I know my shit. I'm beautiful. I got beautiful teeth, gorgeous smile, you name it, right? Before that, people all over the place would say these things to me, but I wouldn't believe them. I'd be like, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I never really took it to heart. Now I do. And we both know what that means. It just means it creates a lot of freaking confidence, which then creates a lot of value. Am I right? I love that. And I think that um, this moment of self-acceptance it's it's not about being like here's the definition i'd like to make it's not about loving yourself it's not being selfish yeah right? loving yourself is loving the creator inside of you loving the spark of light inside of you loving that life that you are right and we came to this world with different purposes each one of us has different gifts has different talents just like you were describing you have your gifts you have your talents and when we can connect and align ourselves with our truth with our gifts and our talents this is the best way we can manifest we can bring bring to this world the light that we came to share with the world and the reason why we have it, the reason why you have these talents, the reason why you're such a great tax strategist and, and, and attorney and like all the work that you do in that area, people wouldn't even think you're doing it looking at you right now at the mic, right? They yes. would think, well, but you have this whole amazing gamma of gifts that you are bringing to the world because you are the one to deliver it to people. And yes. you're doing it in your way. You're doing it yes. with fun, with ease, with joy, with grace. You're taking the scarcity and intimidation out of it. And this is your gift. You're allowing people to deal with difficult things, being at ease, having fun and sense of humor about it. And that's a gift because people go crazy because of that, because of problems with money or intimidation that they feel not knowing how to deal with it and here you are you're mm -hmm. you're showing up shining the light onto yes. a subject that is very difficult not everybody can do it so this is your gift and you embracing it fully by accepting your way that you're not ex you're not you, you're not going to the to the space where oh it's supposed to be this way and it's supposed to be um manila folders with ugly drawers and, and yes. <laughs> beautiful we're lighting yes. a candle when we do money yes we're putting the yes. music on we're rewarding ourselves when we do money because if something difficult is in our way we can we don't have to go through struggle we can do it we can learn from love with ease and grace and we can do it with love and ease and grace and playfulness and looking at ourselves in the mirror and say I love you exactly yes. the way you are and exactly the way you are not. Yes. And that yes. way I can do that same thing to other people. The person next to me, I could love that person exactly the way the way that person is not. And yes. is at the same time. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm going, girl, you're giving me like an orgasm over here. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> it's so true. Oh, it yeah. really is, isn't it? I mean, and this is why, like, for example, my folks out there, right? Like, you know, we talk about these things and then it's like, but how does it all tie back to taxes? <laughs> and you make it beautiful. You enjoy, you infuse, you inject energy into it. And that energy, you in, you connect to the energy of not, you, you need to be in the space. You're not just doing taxes. You're creating a space where you are free, where you're powerful, when you're not controlled by money, but when you're supported, it and you can use the money that you can create and you can I don't want to use the word control but manage in yes. a way that you can have the biggest impact in the world yes. so you yeah. are creating platform when you are fulfilling your purpose and yeah. to do that you need to deal with money because money is nothing else but energy yes. money is a frequency and yes. when we are aligned with it and it's up to us how we align with it. We don't have to struggle. We can light the candle and put beautiful music on and enjoy the process. Yes. And speak with Jonathan and he'll teach you how. And then you gotta talk to Julia because she's gonna turn around and teach you how to uh, properly light that candle and get into an alignment to, you know, to get truly structured, right? I mean, yeah. this is this is this is the beautiful thing about every entrepreneur that we work with is you know we can bring everyone together and go how can we utilize each other so that we can continue to maximize the impact so this is what i say all the time right yeah. every business owner so talking to you out there every entrepreneur every entrepreneur was born with something and that is we were born with the piece of happiness and the reason for that is because we realize that we're all bad employees and we and we can't have someone else control our destiny so we were given this gift, right, to control our own destiny. And as a result, by the way, Uncle Sam rewards us by allowing us to take deductions on our tax return, legal deductions like Trump, for example, because he understands that we're bringing forth this sense of happiness. So in my case, Julia, God or a spirit or a universe or something said, JB, your talent is to talk, hence why I created my own show, right? Your talent is to teach, which is why I love, I have, why I have a five-day program coming up, October 14th. I'm going to do a, sh a shameless plug, right? So we do all of that because the reality is, is that I'm bringing forth a piece of what I know makes me happy, and that is financial happiness, right? Financial success. And you, Julia, you've tapped into what you already were born with, right? Like what you shared earlier, which is you know how to tap into energy. You know how then to teach it and bring it. That's what I sense of you, by the way, is that you bring this then to others so that they can tap into it. And then they themselves can take it to a whole new rocket level and that's your sense of happiness in a way we can say what you do is energy happiness or spiritual happiness because we know as entrepreneurs that if there's anything that's missing in our lives then everything goes cattywampus which is why i say in my show we have to improve ourselves first because the business is the reflection of self and so if the business is a fraction of you and you're you're basically crapped out then your business is going to crap out and your money is going to crap out because like what you said too earlier is that money current C, right? Current C is money as well, which is a reflection of all those two components. So that's why I believe that if we can raise the self, we raise the business and then we raise the money. And then when you work with the certified tax coach and a planner like me, then the taxes go down. So Julie, we're getting close to the end of my show here. Um, but how do, how do we get a hold of you? How do we get to connect with you so that we can learn how to infuse our energy and, and make this beautiful jewelry that you're wearing around your neck and so forth and, and really have that intention to have something so that we walk away. So share with us, share, point us in the direction. Yeah. So there are a few ways. I have an online store. So my brand is Untamed Hearts and where my name is, you see Julia, untamedhearts.com. So yes. that's the online um, shop where you can read the stories, when you can find pieces. I also have a lot of one-off pieces. So I highly recommend people to connect with me directly. And it's Julia at untamedhearts.com. 
So julia at untamedhearts.com, my email address. I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, whether it's um, energy alignment, whether it, I'm also a brand strategist. My background, 25 years in corporate world, working at brands like Condé Nast, like W Magazine, Vogue Magazine, Glamour, like all of this high-end um, brands where I did a lot of work in marketing and in designing and creating and creative direction so that I, I can I, I help other people to create their own brand. So Untamed Hearts was born in between working with my clients. So I still offer that. So you can still use that email and get in touch with me and aligning what you do with your energy, with your truth, with your path. And um, is something that I also offer one-on-one. -on -one. So use that email, just get in touch with me and let me know that you have met me through Naked Tech Talk. Yes. And um, you'll get like a free consultation. <gasps> and Ooh, we like freebies. And if you decide to, um, if you want one of the Untamed Hearts pieces, you also get like 20% off as a, a, if you mention that you uh, heard me from Naked Tech Talk with Jonathan. Um, and then also the one-on-one -on -one styling sessions, and I'll help you to find the piece you belong with. I love that. That's fantastic. That's great. Because you have this natural ability to tune in and sense yep. the vibration of people and the object and so forth and so on. So that's fantastic. So you hear that peeps out there? So you can connect with her, Julia, at untamedhearts.com. You can find her website, untamedhearts.com, and check out her marketplace, so to speak, and also book perhaps your consultation. And um, here's what I know about energy and energy healers and so forth and so on. My personal testimony to people like you, Julia, who are born with this amazing gift. Mm. I've met plenty in my lifetime. And what I know very powerfully is that when we have that open mind and that hope and heart for it, it is amazing what one can do for you. So you should waste the no time and get out there and make it so. And then also what I'd like to do is, uh, Julia, do you have in the last in the last 10 minutes or so, is there a pressing tax question that maybe I can offer for you right now and my listeners? Yeah, always. Um, let me see. So there's so much going on right now for the small business owners. Yes. Um, for example, for me, all of my shows got canceled, right? Because I used to, like all, all the time I would go to art shows, to uh, transformational leadership shows, to uh, vegan shows, because I'm vegan, everything I do is vegan. So okay. all the live events are canceled, right? Yes. So now we need to recreate how we actually make the business sustainable. Yes. So there's SBA small loan. Some of us got some small loan. Some, some yes. of us PPP. Pay, yes. pay protection loans. Yes. What do we do with taxes now? Like, Ooh, there's okay. practically no cash. Like, well, this comparing to what it used to be, the cash flow is very different, right? Yes. Now, we all have been there. Yes. Loans. Yes. How are we operating in this space? It's an unknown space. So, Let's any talk. advice around that, I think, is valuable. Let's talk about that. So we're well, so real fast, as fast as I can. Let's see here. Ready? So the two types of loans that you're talking about is the PPP loan, which came about, uh, I think it was in like early Marchish or something like that. And then we had the EIDL that was kicked out by the SBA. And so the PPP is the Paycheck, Paycheck Protection Program. I don't know why they call that that. At the end of the day, you're supposed to use it for paychecks for your employees. And then the emergency uh, injury uh, disaster loan, the EIDL, uh, was designed for more long-term stability. It was supposed to be for, again, long-term, right? So what's re really important about this is two things. Number one, it's such a murky water even to this day. In fact, uh, the PPP, uh, the balance was supposed to be fully forgiven right now. Like that's the talk, right? Talk of the town is the full, fully forgiven. And they handed it out like candy because everybody and their mother needed it. And some people got it when maybe they shouldn't have and some did. And, you know, the whole list goes on. But what no one really told anybody 
And they did say that the PPP loan, and I'm only talking about PPP here. I'm not talking about any other sex organs, just the PPP. So the PPP uh, is said to be forgiven. All is forgiven. Now, normally what happens is when Uncle Sam forgives debt, all right, the receiver of the forgiveness picks it up as income and then has to pay taxes on the forgivable portion. That's the normal way of doing business. But the PPP decided it needed an ABCs and some ZYWs and changed all the rules and said, instead of it being deduct, I mean, instead of it being tax free, I mean, non taxable, which it still is, you are not allowed to deduct the expenses for which the PPP covered on your tax return. Ooh. So let's talk about that. So let's pretend that you were lucky enough to get, let's make math easy for us, uh, $10,000 as a PPP loan. Now you were supposed to use at least 60% of it for wages. So let's pretend that you use $6,000 to keep your secretary going for the next two months. And you use the $4,000 to pay for either your mortgage interest, your rents for maybe where you were living for your building uh, and the utilities. And so you use the remainder for those things, right? So at the end of the year, before COVID, so BC, that's my new thing around. So, so BC, you would have on your return deducted the $6,000 for the wages and then the $4,000 for the rent and the utilities for the, for the office location, okay? And you therefore would have reduced your taxable income by that $10,000. Now, because the PPP, you're not allowed to take the deductions, right? So as a result, I cannot deduct now the $6,000 in wages. I cannot deduct the $4,000 for the rents and the utilities. So in essence, and this is what people don't know, you don't know this, is as a result, now my taxable income on the business just did what? It went up by the forgivable portion. So let's just hypothetically do this real fast. And let's say I brought in $10,000 in revenue and I had $10,000 in wages and rents, like I just explained. 10 minus 10 equals how much, Julia? You got this answer. 10 minus 10 equals? Zero. $10 minus $10 equals? <laughs> zero. zero, right? Absolutely zero, which means zero times taxes equals zero, right? Well, if I brought in $10,000, and I cannot deduct the, the $10,000 of PPPs, which are related to the expenses, the wages and the rents. So that means that I technically have $10,000 now in taxable income, don't I? And if you're filing a Schedule C, and I know most of you out there are, if you're filing a Schedule C, guess what, peoples? You're going to pay 15.3% on that tax amount, on that amount that's not allowed to be deducted. So now it's a minimum $1,530. And then it's gonna flow up to your individual tax return and be subjected to ordinary income tax. And if you happen to be in a tax bracket, let's say of 20%, now you have ordinary income tax of $2,000 plus the $1,530. So now you're going to shell out to Uncle Sam uh, four or five. Let's go. See, I'm, I mean, I play an accountant right now, but hold on. I'm going to get my handy dandy calculator. Just because I'm an accountant doesn't mean I don't use 10 keys. So I go four, 15, 30, and I said $2,000. So you're going to have to pay Uncle Sam $3,530 in taxes for forgiving the PPP. So Julia, you, I'm sure, cause you work with me and we're gonna plan your life out in advance. But people who do not plan their life out in advance are about to find themselves with a huge tax bill 
unnecessarily at the end of the year. So you want to avoid that. You don't want to have a surprise tax bill. Then your asses need to click on a link I'm about to put right here and get onto a consultation with me because I can only help you brothers and sisters until November, the end of November, November 30th. And then I don't take anybody else for planning after that. So my point is, is that many of us are going to end up with surprise tax bills. And don't go be blaming your tax preparers. Don't become knocking on my door and blaming it on me. If you want the change, you need to contact your Congress members now and tell them you know what's up. You know how they hid it in the law. And I'm telling you right now how they hid it in the law. Now, as far as the EIDL is concerned, technically speaking, there was a portion of the EIDL that was part of the PPP format. So the rules are still the same. Whatever amount's forgiven, you're not going to deduct on your tax return. So instead, right, if you just want the standard SBA loan, the EIDL with the non-forgivable stuff, things remain the same. Business goes as usual. Now you have a loan, by the way, is not income. It is a loan. And so it's not picked up as income and should not belong on the profit and loss statement, right? Should not belong on your Schedule C. So when we start repaying them back over 30 years, right? The only amount that you're going to be able to deduct is the interest portion of the payment, not the principal. So if, let's say your repayment is $400 and of that $400, $50 of it is interest. You're only allowed to deduct $50 and that's it. So this is what's, this is the reality of that. Now, if you are one of the people that did not take advantage of the PPP or you did like me and you realized that I can get better tax credits than I can the forgiveness portion, then you may qualify for something called the employee retention tax credit, which is up to $5,000 in tax credits per employee with qualifying wages of $10,000 per employee. Now, here's the thing, Yimabingi, not everybody qualifies. If you did not experience significant loss from the same quarter in this past year. So we look at, let's say, third quarter of 2020, and we compare it to the third quarter of 19. If you did not have more than a 50% drop in revenue, then the, then the employee retention tax credit would not apply to you. So we have to always look at that, right? Now, here's the thing. No double dipping. So Uncle Sam, he's a prude. So when he shows up at a party, he doesn't like it when people take bites of potato chips chips, and then puts it into the dip twice. No double dipping. He thinks that's gross. So he thinks the same thing of this. So you cannot take the tax credit, the employee, tax, employee retention tax credit, and the forgiveness portion of the PPP or the EIDL forgiveness portion. You cannot take both. It's one or the other. So that's the thing. And again, with the, with the EI, with the employee retention tax credit, the ERTC, um, again, you have to meet the qualifications that your income was truly impacted. And, you know, there are some of us, Julia, that did a really good job of, uh, and I don't care what people say, of pivoting, right, of making rapid changes. You see, COVID presented to us two opportunities. It either, it either for some of us, it might have stopped us and we dried up and we are no longer in business, that is not the fault of anybody other than the business owner for not finding a way to make it work. Number two, it presented a possibility, an opportunity for a lot of us to change the way we're doing business so that we can continue to make money. So believe it or not, do you know what industry my clients, that my clients, do you know what industry is skyrocketing right now? Digital marketers. Why? Because everybody in the world realized that no one sees me because like you said, Julia, like I used to too, the stages dried up, the live events dried up. Did you know that now people who used to put together live events are now creating systems where you can have a live event online with separate breakout rooms and separate meeting rooms and I mean, all kinds of coolness, right? So needless to say, businesses like that that are doing really well may not qualify for the tax credits. So Again, let me tell you something, people. Taxes is like trying to defend yourself in a criminal proceeding before a judge. 
it doesn't go very well for the person who tries to defend themselves. And, or better yet, it's somebody who tries to sail a ship for the very first time, but they don't even know where they're going. They're just hitting the engine and running. And if you don't have a navigator at the minimum, which is what we do, at a minimum to show you and to guide you through the rough waters and the storms, your ship's going to be sunk before it goes anywhere. And that's the reality of people in the tax system. And that's what's happening right now. We have a huge looming storm ahead of us over the horizon that we as tax planners like myself are well aware of. And everybody else doesn't even see the storm that's coming. The next depression, the next recession in this country is going to, sorry, you got me passionate, Julia. The next recession that's going to come, it's going to be because people are not going to pay their tax bills because they're going to get surprise tax bills because of the PPP. Now, I just used a $10,000 example. I know people who got 50,000, 60,000, 100,000. Can you imagine? They're going to have to pay that money back in the form of self-employment tax and ordinary income tax. That's the reality. That is the truth. Mm. Damn. You uh, this is a separate show. We have to go deep. <laughs> so many layers to that. There's a lot. We keep going. We keep going. We got viewers right now. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely like one on one consultation talking about the business. Yes. With you. And like, because there's so many nuances that could make it good or not so good. Right? Yes. So, did I help you answer your question, by the way? Did I help you answer yours? You have. And, and that answer brought a lot of other questions. Oh, crap. Okay. Give me yeah. one more. Just one more. Just give me one more question. So when you were talking about that forgiveness, like that um, in between, you said the third option is for um, I should the employer re retention tax credit. Yes. Is yeah. it, is it, it's not a loan. It's not additional portion of the money, right? It's just the condition under which you can allow yourself not to pay that much taxes, right? So you wouldn't yes. be, Doctor, as much, and that you need to qualify for. It. So, so I I read something today that there's a possibility of increasing your SBA, that the the disaster loan. Um, but you need to qualify. You, have you heard anything about that? Like, there's there's a possibility not about taking a second loan, but those people who already received that, if they need more to sustain the business because it's not back to business as usual yet, yeah. that then there's a possibility of increasing the amount that you got. Have you heard anything about that? I have not actually mm -hmm. been privy to that. So now you got me a little curious because now I'm like, I want to go check it out. But what I would do is this. Listen, if you're a business owner, okay, I'm talking to you. If you're a business owner, your ass better be best friends with the banker where you bank. Mm -hmm. So you should know your banker's name by first name, and they should know your name by first name. Because here's why. I can get on the phone right now and I can call up Scott. He's my bank manager over at BBBA. I can call up Scott and be like, Scott, so I heard this rumor. Did you hear this rumor? I heard this rumor that we can get more money in my SBA loan that I already got qualified because you're the you're the guys who funded the money to me through the SBA. Can I qualify for more mo mo? And because he's my friend, right? Because I've felt I've cultured the relationship. I sent him some yum yums, and I've invited him over for virtual coffees, and I made him feel really special, right? Because he's my banker. He's gonna be like JB. I'm looking at all of your accounts. Julia, you're a banker. She's going to be like, I'm looking at all your accounts. Let's make that happen, right? If they can make it happen, right? So bankers actually should be one of your main contacts, and you should be fostering those relationships. That's all I'm going to say. You really should be. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I wanted two extra savings accounts because I'm, I'm doing a crazy budgeting thing in my own business, and um, I need more savings accounts. I just picked up the phone, called up Scott. I'm like, Scott, I need two savings accounts. He's like, boom, 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 done, done. Mm -hmm. So that's 
why we need to have those relationships. So go to your bank and ask them what those rules are. And then right now with the forgiveness thing that's coming up, rumor has it, rumor has it, that it's supposed to be a check the box and that you're attesting under perjury that you've used the money for what it was supposed to be. And supposedly it's the banks that will audit you and not the government, so they say. So I've not come across anything that has solidified that, but here's what you do. You reach out to your bank and you let them know what's the procedure for qualifying for the forgiveness. And each bank is gonna have their own rules and their own regulations about how they're gonna proceed with the forgiveness portion. So I believe if you bank with Washington Federal Credit Union, because one of my clients do, they are in the process of opening it up, I think in the next few weeks. Um, I do know that BBVA is also opening it up here in the next few weeks. So I suspect we're gonna start to see the opening of the loans. PPP? Yeah, for the PPP for forgiveness, to start applying to get them forgiven. Because they're not automatic. They have to apply for it to be forgiven. Mm. And do we know when the the deadline, like cutoff line, when? No. Right? Every bank is doing their own thing. So like technically my PPP that I took out, I start going into repayment November 1st. So those are my terms. I start going back into repayment November mm. 1st. Mm. So I'm assuming that BBVA is going to have this shit cleared up in the next couple of weeks because we're getting close to those deadlines. And I'm not the only one that got it at that time. A whole yeah. bunch of us got it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's a whole other question about banks because I am I I am with Wells Fargo Steel, but I was I, like, there wasn't even a possibility to reaching anybody. So it's this huge machine that completely let down people like me. So I am looking into possibility of switching the banks, but it's kind of like you in the middle of something that it's not so effective. But in general, like I would love some recommendations of a banks where you can be personal. If you're a banker and you're listening to Julia, you go, you're going to have to hook up with her. Well, yeah. here's what I would recommend to you, uh, Julia. So um, big, big banks, the big ones out there, you mentioned one. Um, depending on the branch size, may or may not be in the position to treat you like their high-end clients, so to speak. And one of my really good friends actually works in the Wells Fargo division in one of the big, huge areas. And, and here's the thing, like, you have to go to the right branch or to the physical location. So if you happen to live by a Wells Fargo building, I would be dragging my ass in there with your PPE right? Materials on your face masks and your gloves. And I don't want to no, but seriously, I would walk in there and I would say, you know, I would like to speak to the banking manager and they're going to say why. And you're going to say to them, because I'm, op I'm interested in opening up a business savings, an additional one or an additional business checking. Listen, honey bunnies, they're all motivated by money. So you get in and then you just start talking to them, right? Like, hey, so I, because maybe it's true. Maybe you want to open up an additional checking or something. And you begin to build that relationship. So just like in sales, right? We both know this about sales. Just like in sales, right? I discovered, by the way, that my sales currently have a problem, right? I'm literally hemorrhaging in my sales in terms of the leads. So like I had a really hot potatoes and they're all like cold right now. My coach said, she's like, they're like dead potatoes. They're not even hot potatoes. You can't even toss them. Like you can hold them. So so needless to say, I, I, I know this a little bit, right? So because of that, your banker is the same way. It's fostering the relationship. So you go in, introduce yourself. I'm looking at starting something, something, something. And then you go in maybe three, four days later, bring them something, bring them a gift card, like for five bucks to Starbucks or, you know, bring them a gift bag, like a, not a gift basket. No, 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 not allowed. But bring them something with like your name on it, like your business name. Use an advertising package, right? Uh, I, have a, I have a client that actually does that, that sends out these amazing, delicious yum-yums. They're high-end. They're really high-end because she only uses high-end materials. Like we're talking delicious. And she fabricates this in her in her, uh, her, her kitchen area of her, of her business and so forth. Just, it's just fantastic. You can look her up. It's cute. Q-T-S-I-E. Q -Q cutesy. I think it's Q apostrophe T S I E dot com. And what she does, because she's a client of mine, is you send out advertising packages, but you send them with all your name and it's it's fantastic. The point about it is you take that to the bank, 
right? I like to see the bank manager again today. You know, I want to just thank him personally for opening up that checking account, blah, 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 right? And just like you would chew the fat with a sales conversation person, right, with a potential client, you're going to chew the fat with the banker, right? I just want to say hello. Thank you so much. You really helped me out. You know, things are great. I just want to just let you know that I'm so thankful. Here's something as a thank you. And they're going to remember that. And then three, four days later, maybe another week, you go in again, you make a deposit, right? Because we all got monies coming in. And instead of using the mobile deposit, you take the physical check to the bank, to the same branch. And again, I'd like to see the manager again, you know, just see how he's doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. And if he's available, you see him or you call him, you make an appointment to go in and have a conversation with him. So it's a reverse sales because you're trying to sell because listen, sales is 20 is 24 seven, baby. We're all pimps 24 seven. So your job is to convince that banker that you're worth his or her time right? Your benefit to them is that one day you're going to be the billionaire who's going to bring him the billions of dollars and he's going to make a shit ton of commissions on your deposits, right? So he has to believe that you're worthy and valuable and that your high-end piece of business property that he wants to invest his time in. And then when things happen like the PPPs and the Udu Udus and the blah, 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 blahs, he's right or she's right there for you to help you through it. Mm. Thank you. This is a great advice. And it, probably I will change the banks and I will do exactly that. And my feeling is that I want to find a bank where it's a little bit smaller and a little bit more personal. That's my um, for any of my viewers, if you're if you're li watching live, go ahead and put your recommendations of banks that you found working yeah. with. We would love that. Julie and I would both love that. Love that. Um, Julie, I've also found that if you uh, bank with small credit unions, if you bank with credit unions, they tend to uh, be also more about the relationship part of it as well. Uh, the only downfall is that because their funding is slightly less, their websites tend to be a little bit like 1999 and things of that nature. So it can't be a, a problem for us in terms of like the counting in the back end, that kind of stuff. But credit unions are fantastic. Fantastic place to start too. And then I'm going to give a shout out to a bank that I also bank with for my nonprofit. And this is to you, Comerica Bank. So I don't know if there's any on the East Coast because you're in New York, uh, mm -hmm. but Comerica Bank, they pride themselves on... Uh, having all of their bankers remember your name. Like yeah. you walk into a branch, they all know who you are. Like this is wow. their culture. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah. So go to Comerica That's Bank. That. Go to Comerica Bank. If you have a Comerica Bank, go check them out. Yeah. Will you leave the links? Are you allowed uh, to Here, I'm going to post them right now live. So yeah. check out Comerica Bank. That's a great bank. And then I don't know any others in terms of credit unions, but just check out credit unions. Like if you, for example, like there's credit unions for like teachers. I used to belong to one. I was a teacher at one point. So I was part of the teacher's credit union. They have like Navy credit union. They have army credit unions. Like there's different credit unions. And here's why. So you go open up a traditional checking account at a regular bank. You're just like a depositor. Like, thanks for the money. Have a great day. Right. When you're a credit member banker, you are actually called a member because mm -hmm. believe it or not, you're actually investing in shares of the bank itself. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. So if you notice at a regular bank, you're not called, they don't, they don't call it shares. They just call it deposit or whatever they call it. But if you pay attention, if you're at a credit union, they use the word shares and they tell you how many shares that you're depositing or vice versa. So you own shares inside of a credit union. Now, for those legal experts out there, my advisors, my my tax lawyers have, I mean, my lawyers have told me the following. Do not take anything I say right now as tax advice or legal advice. Don't even say and call me out if I'm like saying the wrong shit. Just know that this is the basis of how things are working. So that's what happens. You get called a shareholder basically yeah. in yeah. a credit union. I love that. But thank you so much. That's a lot welcome. of information to work with. And 
a lot of work to do to get some research done about what's mm -hmm. happening. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do a shameless plug for my yeah. five week program that's coming up. Uh, so Julia, you may be interested in this too, but I'm not trying to sell you. That's not my position here. So for those out there right now, if you are a solopreneur, a sole proprietor, single member LLC, or something to that effect, and you're either in your startup phase or you're in that two to like, yeah, if you're in that startup to about two to three years phase of your business, and you've got burning questions like, how do I protect myself legally and tax wise? Uh, how do I stop the government from pounding down my door and putting me out of business? Because they do do that. Uh, how do I walk away with the confidence knowing that I can deduct the things that I can deduct like Donald Trump did? Um, how do I ultimately separate myself from my business? Because everyone I hear around me says that's what I should do. How do I do it? Mm. And how do I keep all this money I've been making in my pocket for the long term? Then you, my friends, should come and join me October 14th and sign up for my program called More Money, Less Tax, The Blueprint. And I'm gonna link, I'm gonna link the link right now in the chat. And you are going to click on it and you're gonna find out that right now it is retailing for $5,997. But Julia, you will not believe what we did. So we got together, because I have corporations, and we found, uh, we found over $60,000 in scholarships to provide to women and LGBTQ business owners who want to partake of my program. You can get up to $5,800 to offset and apply towards the course. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. And it's going to be five weeks. And then there's a special deal. Some lucky winner is going to get a real live tax planning session hot seat with me in real time that's normally valued at over $24,000. And some lucky winner is going to get that. And they're going to have a completely full mapped out tax plan for their future. Amazing. So I, I put the link in the chat box. If you click on that, you can do that. If you're friends with Julia, you're going to be able to, by next week, use a code that's going to be special to her if you know her. So reach out to her and uh, you're going to get something even more special. It's ridiculous, Julia, right now what we're doing. So uh, just so you know, you're going to have an opportunity here to join the forces. Um, so needless to say, here's the dealio, Emilio. You're going to walk away finally with the confidence to take your business to the next level, plain and simple. And if you're a little timid, that's okay. Because you're going to be joined with a lot of people who are in similar shoes like you. You're going to be taught by someone like me who has a master's degree in secondary education. You're going to be taught by somebody who's an IRS enrolled agent, who's been doing this for over 16, 17, 18 years now. And the reality is, is that for once, you're going to have the confidence so that everything in your life, your financial life is in alignment with your purpose of what you do as a badass CEO that every single one of you is. So with that in mind, we only have limited seats. We're only taking 10 students, Julia, just 10, just mm -hmm. 10. So with that, I want to thank everybody for watching and participating in all your comments. I want to thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. I want to give a big thank you and a virtual hug for being here on my show. I fell in love with you, sister, the moment I saw you speaking at an event. And I was like, you have to be on show. So thank you so much for bringing your energy and your light and your brilliance and the things that you said here to us. And it's like we always do. May you be happy. May you be free of suffering. And may you never be separated of your happiness. And for all my viewers out there, 
May you all be free of suffering. May you all be happy. And may you all never be separated from your happiness. Because here's the thing. It all comes back to this. It's con mucho, mucho, mucho dinero. With that, I'm Jonathan Bangle, host of Naked Tax Talk. Thank you once again for joining us. And may we see each other again next week. <laughs>